Hello fellow YouTubers and welcome to my channel dedicated to all things gaming in mixed and virtual reality. With the release of the software version 23, Oculus have moved the link cable out of beta and enabled variable resolution and refresh rates on the new Oculus Quest 2. So it got me thinking, which is now the best wired headset? Can the $299 Quest 2 go head to head with the very best VR experience currently on the market? Let's get ready to rumble! Before we start, the channel is growing rapidly at the moment, so if you enjoy the madness that is Mac in VR, please subscribe and drop a like on this video. It really helps me out, thank you. Facebook has started the gradual rollout of software update version 23. Amongst many new features and bug fixes, the release has finally taken Oculus Link out of beta and in conjunction with the PC software update, has allowed for variable resolution and refresh rates. With your headset switched on and connected to your PC, open the Oculus app, go to devices, then graphics settings. You now have the option to change between three refresh rates, 72 hertz, 80 hertz, and 90 hertz, though you will need USB 3 to run the high refresh rates. You also have this slider, which can change the resolution between 0.5 all the way up to 1.7. Once you input your new settings, the headset will reset, and voila, clear, crisp visuals at high resolutions and 90 hertz as long as your PC is up to the task, of course. For reference, I'm running an Intel i9 RTX 2080 Ti and 32 gig of RAM. I'm also running the Asus Turbo app, which is overclocking my 2080 Ti on the gaming setting. So pretty capable and able to easily run Half-Life Alex on a mixture of high and ultra settings. So I started to wonder if this at $299 can give this at $999 a run for its money. I'm going to break both headsets down and talk about pros and cons, starting with comfort, ease of use, controllers, tracking, audio quality, sound and microphone, and finally, all important visuals. Then I'm going to fire up some of my favorite games and let both systems duke it out to find out who is the winner. Again, for reference, I'll be running the Index at 120 hertz and Super Sampling set at 1.2, and the Quest 2 at 90 hertz with the resolution also set to 1.2. Are you ready? Let's jump straight in then. Comfort. It is widely regarded that the Index is one of the most comfortable headsets to use for long periods. I know because I have completed epic five hour sessions of Onward with my chums and apart from severe VR face, I've not felt any discomfort. The Quest 2, though lighter than its predecessor, is still front heavy. The strap is not as effective at distributing the weight and is therefore uncomfortable even after a short period. There are plenty of comfort mods available online. I have this modified head pad from iGlow that costs $15. That 100% solves the problem. But in this test, Index wins hands down. Ease of use. I'll include setup here as well. If you're going to play with your Quest 2 connected to a link cable, you're going to need a dedicated play space near your PC. This is obviously the same for the Valve Index. However, the setup of the Quest is far more simple and straightforward. Turn it on, sign in with your Facebook account. Let's not go there. Draw your Guardian space, plug in the link cable, click enable and away you go. The user interface is unchanged from the original Rift and Rift S, so is therefore familiar and intuitive. Setting up the index takes considerably longer and is more inconvenient due to mounting base stations in your dedicated play space, pairing and updating the headset. Plus if you are using a cable management system like this Kiwi Design version 2 pulley kit, it can take even longer. SteamVR's UI is more technical and in-depth than the much more simple Quest UI, though due to its specialist nature, it has more complexity. This test goes the way of the little bruiser, a win for Oculus Quest 2. Controllers. I like the new Quest 2 controllers. I like that they fixed the battery cover. The units sit right in your hand and have a premium feel. Some people don't like the enlarged tracking ring, but me, I find it to be okay. The index controllers are the gold standard and are without doubt the best designed, most versatile controllers for VR. Anybody who says they aren't hasn't used them. There have been some issues with reliability and I myself have had to return my left controller due to the dreaded thumbstick drift problem. But the Valve customer service experience was quick and hassle free. This test goes to the Valve Index. Number four, tracking. The Quest uses inside out tracking via its four built in cameras to help you move around in VR. This means that there is no need for any external sensors, wires or extra electrical sockets. The Valve Index uses two external Lighthouse 2.0 base stations, which utilize lasers 
to sweep your play space and track your position in VR. Valve's solution gives you sub-millimeter resolution to capture any movement and is seen again as the gold standard. However, I have not noticed any problems with the Quest 2 tracking, even when using a virtual gunstock, and therefore, I'm going to call this a draw. Controversial? Well, I say it as I see it. Microphone and audio. This is what the Valve microphone sounds like. She sells seashells on the seashore. This is what the Oculus Quest 2 microphone sounds like. She sells seashells on the seashore. The microphone quality on both headsets are virtually indistinguishable, so this part of the test is a draw. However, there is no hiding it. The audio solution on the Quest 2 is below par. Not saying that it's bad, it is passable, but when you put it up against the industry-leading off-ear speakers of the Valve Index, there's no contest, I'm afraid. The speakers are held just off your ears, have a deep bassy tone and incredible directional input, essential for games like Onward and Population One, where sound direction is so important and can mean the difference between life and death and a decent chicken dinner. Get him, he's the last dude, he's low. 30 seconds. Good job. <laughs> that was fuck. That's one of the best games I've ever been involved in that mind. I bought these in-ear buds from Amavision, which I've previously raved on about on the original Quest, and they 100% improve the audio, but without these, it's a win for the index. Visuals. All footage was recorded by me on OBS. You can see the jagged lines on the Mark 18 on the Quest 2. Did you notice that the Quest is recording larger or closer to the screen? I think this is caused by the field of view being 90 degrees against the index is far wider, 120 degrees. Thanks. So, what's our border guard doing here? Right, but I mean... Or do you want to go further? Yeah, we can drop from this. Uh, okay. well, everyone else them. is going, so I think we can drop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's a team dropping in behind so, us. No. Team dropping in behind us. Okay. The UI on Population 1 is slightly more blurry on the Quest 2. Oh, Where yeah. At? Everyone dropped. Oh, there's a bunch that dropped in. Oh, everyone is around here. Oh, yep. I couldn't see any difference between Quest 2 and the Index on Pistol Whip, but that may be down to the stylized visuals plus the recent graphical update by Cloudhead Games for the Q2. What did you think of that video breakdown? Did you notice any differences? Get involved and comment down below. Now the science bit. Here comes the science bit. Concentrate. Quest 2 has a single LCD screen with a resolution of 1832 by 1920 that can now run at 90 hertz with support for super sampling built in when using the link cable. It's a giant step up from the panel used in the original Quest. The Valve Index has two LCD screens, each with a resolution of 1440 by 1600 per eye, and has only just been superseded as the best panel by the HB Reverb G2's 2160 by 2160 LCD offering. It can run a refresh rate all the way up to a stunning 144 Hz, which is amazing when playing Beat Saber or Pistol Whip, and also has super sampling built into the UI. The win goes to the index, but it's closer than you think. So that's it then, wins in four out of the six categories. The victory goes to the Valve Index by a landslide, doesn't it? It is currently the premium experience in VR, but you do pay for it. $999 gets you a lot of headset, the most comfortable, the best audio, best controllers, and up until recently, 
the best visual fidelity. But don't underestimate the Quest 2 because though it can't quite match the Valve Index in some areas, it does come very, very close. Plus, it can do things that the Index can't. Standalone VR, Quest 2 can do that. Standalone PC VR, Quest 2 can do that via virtual desktop. And since version 1.18 update, the experience is even better. And all starting at only $299. So, <laughs> who has won? Well, I'm the winner. You're the winner, and virtual reality is definitely the winner. If you want the gold standard of VR, dig deep and buy a Valve Index. If you want a budget headset that can do everything, a kind of jack of all trades, then go and snaffle up an Oculus Quest 2. What do you think? Are you expecting an outright winner? Do you disagree with my conclusion? Get involved and comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload any new content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the other side.